Hey everybody, I am on the line right now with Matt Cardona. You know him from his work with WWE as Zack Ryder. He is one of the newest members of the Impact Wrestling roster. Uh, we just saw him debut at Impact Wrestling's Hard to Kill pay-per-view. Saw you on uh, the TV show on Tuesday and waiting to see what's up next for you. I know you have a match coming up this coming week. You're going to tag with Josh Alexander against Ace Austin and Madman Fulton. Matt, how you doing today? I'm great. Uh, super excited to, to be back in the ring, uh, to be an impact. Um, you know, to, to make my debut, to make an impact, so to speak, on, on pay-per-view live, uh, doesn't get better than that. So you've had a up and down year, I guess you, it is appropriate to say, uh, left WWE, had to stay in AEW, you're landing in, in impact now. I guess the question is why now, why does impact make sense for you? Well, you know, on paper, 2020 was a pretty shitty year. You know, you, you look, you see, oh, I got fired. Oh, I had to uh, uh, cancel my wedding. But in reality, it was one of the best years ever uh, to, to, you know, the, the, the Major Wrestling Fair podcast, something that Brian Myers and I started two years ago. It really took off, and a lot of my attention uh, went there. And, of course, you know, I grew up wanting to be a wrestler. That's the only thing I wanted to do. But to have this freedom uh, to really do whatever I wanted to do and just, you know, with the podcast, try anything. There were, there were no handcuffs now. Uh, and we made the brand super successful. We just launched our own uh, network, the Major Pod Network, with all these other spinoff shows. Um, you know, and I've been talking to Impact uh, since, since the, the release. And, you know, it never quite made sense, but we were always very, you know, in contact. And when the, the text came through, uh, you want to come to work, I wrote, always ready. Because it just, it just made sense. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, I by, I don't know, coincidence or fate, I had shaved my body the, the night before and, and got, got a tan. I was ready to go. Uh, I wanted to wrestle. And it was live on pay-per-view, so why not? I want to take a quick sidebar here. Uh, if you guys don't follow the non-wrestling stuff, uh, you just posted something about you've raised, or I'm sorry, you've had over 15,000 toys donated in three years. That's through the major wrestling figure podcast. So not only is that an awesome thing just to do for kids, but you know, that that's a sign of your success. If you want to look at it as far as your reach and that, like that should, you know, hats off to you for doing that. But you know, it's good to have, uh, you know, on a more personal level, it's good to have something like a creative outlet, like that, especially like w everything that happened this year. So, yeah, well, thank you. Like the toy drive is something we started. Uh, so that we, we had the third one this year. Cause when we started the podcast, it was uh, August of 2018. So we're like, well, you know, Christmas coming up, we should do a toy drive. And, you know, we did it kind of last minute and the, the podcast is kind of new. We still raised a lot of toys and the, the year after it got bigger. And then this year, it got even bigger and we're hoping next year it's even bigger. And it's just our way to give back, just a, uh, you know, uh, and the, the fans who, who donated so much, we thank them, you know, more than anything to just give back to the less fortunate because I was a kid growing up and I, all my Christmas memories are, you know, revolve around getting a wrestling figure. So if we can give that feeling to kids, it, it's the best feeling in the world for us. Mm -hmm. You talked about being in contact with impact and you know we we see the opportunities that other wrestlers have gotten especially uh the free agents coming in there's perks of being at impact with creative freedom other stuff you have you walked right into a feud with ace austin but who really made you interested in coming to impact was it some of the talent was it like scott Demore calling you up like right away like hey buddy come work with us. Cause I know he's told me he, he did that to other people. Like what was really the thing that grabbed your attention? It, it wasn't just one thing. It, it was a bunch of things, you know, it was, uh, I said, I said this last week on impact, uh, backstage. I said, you know, the reason I'm here at impact, uh, is for an opportunity. And I feel like I will get an opportunity at impact the locker room. Uh, I think one of the most underrated locker rooms in the history of the business, there's guys hungry, uh, you know, craving their first opportunity. There's guys 
who are craving another opportunity. Guys who've been in the business for so long and never really got a true opportunity, you know? So it's a whole like mishmash of people. And, and I feel I will fit in perfectly. Uh, and I feel like impact is definitely the spot where I will get an opportunity. And you know what? If I fail, at least I get the opportunity. This is an opportunity to all I've ever wanted. But I don't think I'm going to fail because my track record shows that I capitalize on opportunities. They may not come every day. They might not come every year. But when I get it, you better believe I'm always ready and I knock it out of the park. You went to AEW as Matt Cardona. You, you know, what do you hope Impact fans notice or – what do you what do you hope your fans coming to impact with you notice about you since your run with AEW or just about how you've grown as a wrestler over the summer and into this new year? Yeah, you know, like it's it, it's now it's twenty twenty one, right? It's transparency is key. I can't I can't be like the barbarian man matt cardona i'm me right i'm always ready matt cardona you, you follow me on social media you're gonna see wrestling stuff you're gonna see me working out you're gonna see my cast you're gonna see my figures you're gonna see it all and, and that's the beauty uh, of, of 2021 that's the beauty of this, this world and, and, the, and the wrestling world you know and i'm just here with uh you know my fans they're coming with me right and that's that's the most important part i don't care about proving doubters wrong haters wrong there's always going to be haters there always was there always will be Good. I don't care. I'm here to prove to the supporters, my fans, and more importantly, prove myself right. You know, I, I've been saying for years that I'm always ready, that I, that I capitalize on opportunities. Okay, well, here's my opportunity. Let's go. How do you, how do you feel like, you know, you're, you're chasing an opportunity. You're coming in with, uh, with hype, with a following, talent. How do you think you can help impact grow as a performer. They're the ones giving you an opportunity to prove yourself, but how do you feel like you can help the company grow? Well, I mean, there's so many guys, uh, like a guy like Ace Austin, who, you know, when I was watching the product, I, I, I knew like this guy, he, he's going to be something. He's going to have some talent. So if I can get in there and we already wrestled a pay-per-view, we had a little kick-ass five minute match, but if we can have some time, if we can go, I, I'm just like very, uh, I, I said this uh, when I got released from WWE. It feels like like Christmas morning. I see all these new toys, right? I see Ace Austin and and Sammy Callahan and Eddie Edwards and Moose guys I've never wrestled before, and I just can't wait to get in there. And, and yes, I want to have some fun, but I want to you know I want to win. I want to you know uh, extend my career. I'm not here to, to pass the torch to anybody. I'm here to to light the torch and carry it myself. You're obviously bringing in your group of fans with the major wrestling figure pod. Uh, you're always going to be associated with Brian Myers through that. But after your WWE departure, you said you guys weren't going to tag up again. You were just going to keep the show and try to keep it separate. Now that you guys both ended up in the same company again, does that change things at all? Like, do you want to just put that to rest once again or, you know, are you guys going to try to find your own way with as singles guys and then just keep it on air? We're our own people. And then the, the pot, the show is its own thing. I mean, I think the wrestling business has taught us that never say never in the wrestling business, but I have no plans of teaming with Brian Myers ever again. Uh, I have no plans of being in a tag team ever again with, with Josh Alexander. Uh, it's a, it's a one-time thing. He trusts me. He doesn't want to team with me, but we have the common goal, the common enemy right now in ace Austin and Fulton. But, uh, yeah, I have no plan to team with Brian Myers again. Um, I'm sure in, in you know, five, ten years, you'll, you'll play this clip back and I say it and you prove that I'm wrong. But I have no plans right now to team with Brian. We have the podcast. I talk to him every day. That's enough. I don't need to team with him ever again. Fair enough. Uh, I will say uh, – the, the closest that you're going to get to a tag team with you guys, I think, is the uh, the Super 7 figures coming out. Can you talk a little bit about uh, when we're going to see them and just about, you know, maybe how you can get the collecting community to grow through Impact? Because that it really feels like the past year or two, even beyond just your show, like collectibles and that market has really exploded, like. How can you do your part to really get people involved in that? Yeah. So, you know, we started the podcast about two years ago and, you know, we, we kind of want to break the stigma, you know, that 40 year old virgin stigma, 
where that guy is a, a loser, a, a virgin with all these figures on display. We're trying to break that stigma. I mean, video games are cool. Comic books are cool. Why can't figures be cool, right? And we're trying to, you know, let people realize, hey, it, it, don't listen to other people who, who, who don't like what you do and just go your collection off. Display it proudly. You know, I remember back in the day, you know, I would go to Toys R Us and ask for a gift receipt because I didn't want the cashier to think I was buying the figure for myself. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of my collection. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and we say scratch that figure itch. And I, I want people to collect. I want people to, whether it's wrestling figures or whatever, you know, be proud of what you like, whether it's something you grew up on or something new. Uh, and I think with these Super 7 figures, you talk about that, uh, you know, there's the Gallows and Anderson also, uh, the Matt and Bryans. I think, you know, it's a, it's a new system with Super 7 for the wrestling figure fan where you have a month to pre-order them and then they make them. I think the wrestling figure community is not used to that. So I think when they actually do drop, these fans are going to go, well, how can I get it? Well, uh, a year ago, you should have pre-ordered it. And I think the secondary market is going to go through the roof. And then I think we're going to be able to make more superstars. You know, what, what, why can't we have some impact Super 7 figures? Why not? I mean, that's, that's the goal. Now they have the micro brawlers. The micro brawler community, uh, it, it, it's blown up and, and impact just sold out of all those micro brawlers. So let's see. Let's get series two. Let's get series three. Uh, I, I love collecting and I, I, I love, uh, you know, spreading awareness for collecting. And I would love to, you know, get my hands dirty uh, impact and get some impact merch. You know, it's just fun for me. Yeah. I, I know you, you just referenced uh, scratching that figure itch, and one of the other phrases you like to use is, let them breathe, and I'm staring at my shelf full of all of my mint on card action figures, and I'm like, you probably, you probably wouldn't appreciate that very much. No, no. I, I personally let them breathe. And the best part about collecting is there is no good collection. There is no bad collection. Whatever you collect, that makes it the best collection. Everyone has the best collection in the world, in my opinion, however you want to do it. So me yeah. personally, I don't keep them uh, in the box, men on card, because I have too many where, like, if they were on display, I would have no room. I already have no room, and they're out of the package. Uh, there are certain ones I keep in the package because it does look really, really nice. But, yeah, I'm a let them breathe guy. Uh, Lucy, keep them out of the box. That's just how I like it. But if you like them in the box, I'm fine with that. No, no hard feelings, bro. No, nah, it, it it's it's a weird dynamic because I have kids, and they're like, wait, why aren't you opening your toys and playing with them? And then I'm like, well – let me tell you a story about all the Hasbros that I got rid of as a kid. And now I wish I had them. And now it's starting over again. Right. Oh, good luck. <laughs> Best wishes, baby. Yeah. So we, we, we talked a lot about uh, your goals for your next run in the wrestling business with impact for yourself. Uh, a phrase that's often used is I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time. How long are you sticking around with impact? Like, do you want to talk about, you know, are you under contract or are you just doing these tapings and waiting and seeing like how long could we expect to see you this time around? Yeah. So I am not under a, a contract right now. We're just, we're just seeing what happens and, and so far so good. Uh, I was, uh, I had a really great time this, this week. Um, you know, whether it be, you know, being in the locker room or being in the ring. I just, I just really needed that. I needed to be in the ring. I needed to get my, you know, cause the major pod is awesome and it's creative outlet for sure, but I need to be, you know, designing gear or thinking about things for my matches because wrestling is my first love. You know, it's, it's something I always grew up loving being obsessed with. And uh, you know, now that, okay, I had a pay-per-view debut. I, I, I wrestle on impact this week. Uh, oh, okay, well, I need more gear because I don't like wearing the same gear over and over again, you know? So I'm already thinking for the future and uh, Impact definitely seems like my future for now. Do you have any gear that you haven't used yet that maybe is designed that you can't wait to debut? I'll, I'll ask you that You know way. what? It's a, it's a funny story. Uh, it's a funny story. So um, a couple of years ago, I got this Mikey Whipwreck gear, like Mikey Whipwreck inspired gear. He was my trainer. Um, and I just never got to wear it. Uh, I always like planned on wearing it for something and like something always happened uh, and I never got to wear it. So I still have it. Uh, and I think impact would be a great place, uh, you know, whether it be uh, one of the impact plus specials or a pay-per-view or a big event. Uh, I, I still have it. I say I'm still here and I still have that gear. The gear is still here. Hopefully it still fits. Is there a specific reason you're, you're holding off on it? Just out of well, curiosity. Because, you know, Mikey Whipwreck is my trainer. I owe him so much. Uh, you know, I owe him so much for, for, for everything I've accomplished in this business. And it was always meant to be safe for something special. Uh, okay. And then 
that special moment never really came. Uh, so uh, I'm definitely holding on to it for something special. And uh, an Impact pay-per-view, uh, Impact Plus special, that seems pretty important to me. Fair enough. I, I wasn't sure if there was there was a you know a more personal meaning or anything like that. But you know, in the meantime, you have a match coming up this Tuesday. It's yourself and Josh Alexander teaming up against Ace Austin, Madman Fulton. Uh, Impact just announced a, a few shows coming up, so hopefully we see you on one or both of them. It's No Surrender in February, and then Rebellion. Uh, on pay-per-view in april so you know the future's bright for you and impact i'm looking forward to it uh i will say this uh i mean i i'm a fan i i'm glad you're there but one of my writers i had uh reach out and he was like you know what it's really cool to see matt cardona on impact because he's one of my favorite wrestlers and i'm probably going to start watching impact full time now and i was like okay i'll put you on the spot and tell him that i I love that and you know what like (laughs) If that happens, that's that's awesome. I, I really, you know, I think that's great. I, I know my dad's going to start watching, I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> well, Colin, uh, thank you very much for the support, buddy. You can catch Matt on Impact Wrestling this Tuesday. We'll see how long uh, you stick around. But in the meantime, you, you want to plug any of the other projects you have going on, the, the major wrestling figure pod or anything else you have coming up? Yeah, so the major wrestling figure podcast this week, we have Major Fest. It's an eight-day event. Every day we're doing something cool. Um, you know, we announced the Major Pod Network, where there's going to be spinoff shows, uh, including Extreme Conversations with Brian Myers, where he's going to be uh, walking down, uh, you know, taking a trip down memory lane with the ECW guys about certain events in ECW. And then uh, I'm going to be doing MC True Long Island Story. It's the podcast about the old D True Long Island Story, kind of talking about the we're going to go episode by episode, a deep dive into my career at the time, my life at the time, the backstage stuff. Uh, and it should be really, really fun. It's been a decade since that YouTube show, which that, and that show changed my life, changed my career. Uh, I, I don't think it's unfair to say that it changed the business. So to look back at it 10 years later, it's going to be really interesting. Lots to look forward to. Uh, Matt, thanks very much for your time today. Thank you.